Well everyone, the Samsung Galaxy S23 Plus has officially came out. So let's go and see and basically show you how to use this specific phone. Now there's nothing super crazy, I just kind of you know booted this thing up. So I just went through the initial setup and everything. But before we get too deep, let's go ahead and walk through the outside of this phone. At the outside of the Galaxy S23 Plus, we have this beautiful display. It's a 120Hz panel and it is a massive screen for sure, but it looks very, very good. You have the front camera right here, they call it a hole punch display. So essentially you have a lot of capability here already, and this is a very beautiful phone. Now on the left side you don't really have anything, it's just kind of a, almost like a flat side. At the top you have a microphone hole, which is great. On the right side you don't really have anything besides these buttons right here. So you have the volume up button, volume down button, and the power button here as well, which is really cool. So we're already getting some really cool stuff on the left side, on the right side. You can turn on your phone, restart your phone here, you can take screenshots by holding these two buttons, so really cool stuff. And at the very bottom, this is another very important area. So basically have our USB Type-C charging port right here, which is how you charge your phone. But you also basically have your SIM card eject option right here. So at the mic at the hole at the very end right here, that is where essentially you can output your you know SIM card. So if you want to, you can grab your SIM card eject tool, which is in the box. It's just like a little like you know metal thing that looks like this. And you can input that on the hole that is the furthest to the right. If your phone is like this, basically it's the phone closest to the corner. It's the hole closest to the corner. And all you want to do is you want to go ahead and basically input that SIM card eject tool right there. You can go and slide it in. It takes a little bit, tiny bit of force. You don't have to go super crazy. And this little thing will come out. And you can go and input your nano SIM card right here. And that's basically it. Once it's placed in here, all you have to do is go and slide this back in just like so. Click it into place. And that is it. You are pretty much good to go here. And that's pretty much all you're going to have to do in this specific example. So on the back side, this is where things start getting a little bit more interesting. We have a triple camera setup. So it's a really good camera. Everything I've done with this camera so far has been really good. These cameras will last you a very long amount of time as well. You have your flash. You have a glass back. So just be a little careful dropping this thing because if you drop it on the back, it can crack. You have a wireless charging, reverse wireless charging. This phone does have IP certification, so it's a little bit water resistant, but I don't I wouldn't dip it in water if you know and wouldn't feel comfortable doing that. But that kind of is it. You know, that's kind of all you have going with on the back of this specific phone and pretty much on the outside. So in terms of that, that kind of covers it up there. Now, when it comes down to the lock screen, as soon as you power up your phone, I did go through the initial setup already. So the boring stuff in the beginning where it just asks you for your name and whatever, already went through that. So as soon as you boot up the phone, this is what it looks like. Now in the lock screen, you have a few things, which are kind of consistent throughout. At the very top, we have our status bar. This is going to be the same thing basically throughout your whole entire phone. So it's always going to be there. If you're in full screen application, you can swipe down from the top and see it. And you know, that's kind of that. Now with the time, we have our time right here and we have the date. So essentially, if you have the date and time right here, all you have to do is go and look at it and you can see what the time and date is. Now here are where usually you would have notifications, but if you tap on the display right here, you can see some notifications that come up. So these are always going to be there for the most part. So you can always click here to see more notifications. It's a pretty cool thing. At the very bottom, you have your phone icon here and your camera icon here, and they can actually be changed if you want to. But also, if you hold down on the lock screen, you can actually customize this lock screen now. So I won't go into too much detail here. I've made several videos on my second channel exactly how to do that. But if you're interested, check those videos out. It's a very cool thing that we have now. Now, if you want to come to the home screen, you can swipe up. And now we're basically in the you know, fun part of this video. So at the very top, like I said, the status bar stays the same, but this is our home screen. So here is where we can place applications and widgets and basically get a quick idea of what's going on on our phone. If you want to move around some widgets or whatever, you can go and hold down a widget like this. You can bring it up, you can bring it down. You can pretty much do whatever you want to. You can also hold down a widget and you can also just remove it. So if you didn't like it, you can just click remove and that widget will then be removed. You can also you know, do this for this widget as well, but also with app icons. If you look at the Galaxy Store here, I can go and hold it down and move it around. If I want to, I can bring it over to its own page by clicking it over to the side. And I can also just, let's say I didn't want it there. I can go and bring it to the side right here, place it right there, and that's it. Now you can also hold down on the home screen here to get way more capability. If you want to customize the wallpaper, the theme, the settings, you can go and modify that all you want to, which is very cool. Now you can also see that the home pages are here. You can add another home page here as well. So I've been back home. You'll see that the bottom, the dock will always stay consistent. So if I'm in this page or this page or whatever, I can always go ahead and move around pages, but the dock will stay consistent. So if I want to add an app to the dock, I can go ahead and just, you know, grab an icon like this, bring it to the bottom, place it, and that app will always be here. I can also bring it back up and bring it this way. 
so I don't have to really worry about it. Now at the very, very bottom, you will basically see your navigation bar. Now you can change this to a gesture design if you'd rather prefer it, but in this case, we'll just keep it to these nav bar buttons, but it's basically the same thing, you're just kind of swiping up instead. So here, if you want to, let's say we're in the phone call you know, application and you want to go back to your home screen, well, clicking at the home button, the middle circular button here, or squarish button, will always take you back into your home screen. If you want to, though, let's say you're going into an application like Messages, and you go ahead and allow whatever, and you want to go like make a message, but you want to go back to the previous panel. Well, not only can this, you know, back and down arrow, you know, hop out of a keyboard like this, but can also go back. So that's another cool thing. If you want to go back to the previous page, you can just keep clicking back. And that's something that's really cool. Same thing if you're in camera, I think, and if you like take a photo, and you open it up here, and you want to go back to the photos, you can just click that back button, and it'll take you back here. Now, another big thing is, well, let's say you want to go back into the previous application you were just using, or you want to see the previous applications you were using in general. What you can do there is you can click this three line button. So doing that will take you right into this page. So you can see all the applications that you've used or you've been using. So everything stays consistent except for a few things. The recently used apps are pretty much apparent. The home bar is the same and the status bar is the same. However, this middle bar will pretty much show you the applications that you've been using before. So now if I want to, I can go back to this application right here and see the application I was using before. I can also go through and choose like this application and see what's going on with this one. And I could just keep going and this is a pretty cool thing that you can do here. So if you want to, you don't have to do this, but I recommend doing it sometimes. You can also close out of all the applications you were just using. So that's another cool thing that you have the ability of doing. And you don't have to do it, but like I mentioned, you, you can try doing it if you want to. And it's another really cool thing you have the ability of doing. Now you might be wondering, well, how do you actually see all the other applications that you have on your phone? Well, this is a really easy thing. All you want to do is you want to kind of drag to the top your specific home screen. So I'll do it one more time. You see grabbing your little home screen like this and bringing it to the top. And that will basically bring you into this specific panel. Now, these are all of the applications that you have on your phone. So you don't really have to do anything super crazy or, you know, super you know, breathtaking to get into this panel. You just have to swipe up and then these are all the apps you're using. Now, if you want to, what you can also do is you can click on the search bar up here and you can search for applications. Let's say you want to search for an app that you want to see. Well, you can just type in that application, let's say settings. You can go and open up the settings application by clicking there. That's a really cool thing you can do. I mean, a lot of phones have that type of capability. If you're ever lost, you can search for applications here. Even cool. There's so many things you have here that you can do. So just, you know, the sky's the limit. You can kind of mess around with it however you want to. And that is it, you know, coming back home. There's some stock applications that you probably should know of that you may already know about. You can go home or you can click on phone to, you know, call people. You can do messages to, you know, send messages to people. You can go to Google Chrome. This is your internet browser. So you can click here and you can go to your internet browser here, which is great. Camera, you will take photos. Your Google Play Store is another important application. This is an app where you can download all your applications from. So personally, what I do every time I go into the Google Play Store, I will go into the applications that I've already you know, downloaded on my other phone. So I'll click here, I'll click on Manage Apps and Devices. I'll click Manage. If you're coming from a previous phone, then that's great. But if you're not coming from a previous phone, you can always you know, skip this. But I tend to just download the same applications each time. So what I would do is I you know, go down here and pretty much just download the same exact applications that I've been downloading. And that's pretty much all I do. So once I'm done here, I will just click download at the very top. And that's all you're really going to have to do here. Now, if you want to, you can skip whatever you want to do. But essentially, this is my go-to thing. Every time that I come here, I almost download the same exact applications. But you don't really have to do it if you don't want to. Now, once I accept it, like I said before, you can go back home by clicking the home button. And that's that. Now, the last thing I want to go and demonstrate is actually with the settings panel. So like I mentioned before, you have the ability of going into settings. Now, the settings are kind of self-explanatory. I don't really think you, we really need to break down these things like super crazy, but these are some of the most important things I'd recommend doing. So one, I would recommend going through your settings panel and trying to understand everything within this panel. Now, you don't have to go through and like, you know, study every single thing. If you want, if you're ever searching for a setting, if you're ever searching for a setting, you can just click on the search bar up here and you can just search for a setting right here. And it's very, very basic to do. So if you ever want to search up like Bluetooth is an example I've been using, you can just type in Bluetooth like this, and you can just search up Bluetooth and you'll find 10 applications that are 10 things that are going to help you there. Now going back, these specific settings are pretty much the same connections, connected devices. Everyone kind of knows what's going on there. Modes and routine, sounds and vibration, notifications, pretty much the same thing. And like I said, I would recommend going through here. You don't have to mess with these settings, but I would recommend just going through and looking at them because that will help you understand these applications a little bit further. But the biggest thing I'd recommend doing is scrolling all the way down 
clicking on software up, software update, going and down, clicking on download and install, and downloading and installing the latest update. This is a very important thing. Whether you're buying your phone the first day or a year after you're you know purchasing your phone, just I would recommend going through, finding and seeing if there's a software update available, and updating your phone that way. So and that is probably going to be one of the more important things you can do. And that in and of itself is a very, very important thing at the end of the day. So that pretty much covers it up. If you want to power down your phone, you can just click the power button. Or you can also go ahead and just double tap the display on the home screen. And the screen will go and show it off too. So that is pretty much how to use your Galaxy S23 Plus. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button. That would mean so much. But definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out, so then.